there and welcome to Baking with Toki! We're gonna attempt to make spaghetti squash with that final fat and tomato sauce. I'm kidding, you came to the right video if you're looking to dye your tights with onions. We're gonna be cooking up some costly stuff today. Yummy. Onion skin stew. Very vegan friendly. As usual, this is more a vlog than a tutorial, but I mean, if you can learn something with me, then so be it. So usually it's recommended that you use a pot just for dyeing purposes to do your dyeing stuff, but since we're using organic stuff anyways that's edible, well, I'm just gonna use any pot. I'm just going by eye and approximating everything, but this should be about 10 liters of water that we're gonna bring to a boil. I peeled myself the equivalent of about one medium yellow onion and one medium red onion, and this is the peel that's gonna be used to make the dye. So with the daylight, you can see the difference between my skin tone and the tights that I'm trying to dye. I mean, I'm like a bit redder, a bit darker, I'm not sure how this is gonna work out, but the difference is enough that it bothers me. I have three pairs to experiment with, so if this one goes wrong, I'll probably just go the more conventional way and buy myself some RIT dye. I've never used commercial dye before, but I did dye my sister's white wedding veil using this onion technique. <laughs> So I'm hoping that it'll be enough just to get this to be a few shades darker. Two shades, 1.5, 2.8 shades darker. It's almost boiling right now, so I'm gonna get ready to do that soon. And just to update you guys, the squashes are in the oven. Once the water's boiling, you can add all of the onion peels that you collected earlier. You want to make sure that all of your peels are well submerged under the water so that you can extract as much pigmentation as you can from them. I left my peels to bathe for about 15 to 20 minutes. It yielded a pretty nice color, so I was content with that. If you want your dye to be a bit darker, you can let it bathe for longer. And the opposite applies too. After you're content with the depth of the color, you can strain the water to stop it from getting any darker. It's about negative 15 degrees Celsius outside right now, so I'm gonna bring it outside and I'll let it cool for a bit. I don't think 100 degrees boiling water is good for fabric. Might damage my nylon stockings actually, so no, cool it to about half of that. While waiting for my dye to cool and my food to cook, I did a bit of research on the RIT dye and they recommended uh, adding a bit of salt for fabrics like cotton and rayon and adding a bit of vinegar for nylon and silk to help the dye adhere more. I don't know if this applies for natural dyes, but it can't help to try. So I'm gonna add a tiny bit of vinegar to the mix and cross my fingers. Okay, I just read somewhere else that for natural dyes with onion peel, it's good to put vinegar, but they also recommended reheating the dye bath if it's wool, so hot is okay too. I know for RIT dye, the recommended temperature is 60 degrees Celsius. I'll just let my dye liquid cool until I can stick my finger in it. It's so cold. So it's definitely still steaming. That's probably still too hot, so I'll let that cool a little bit longer. Meanwhile, you're gonna wanna prepare your fabric for the dye bath. To do so, you just soak your fabric in warm water for about 15 minutes. This will help spread the dye more evenly onto your fabric and avoid any color patches and uneven spots. Boy oh boy, I wish you could smell this right now. You can probably hear it. But it's sizzling and it's smelling good. So it's still steaming a tiny bit, but I can stick my finger in it fine. This would be the equivalent of like hot tub water. I'm gonna go ahead and pour a tiny bit of, of vinegar in it. Give it a little whirl. And finally, we're gonna take this, which has been soaking for, you know, about 15 minutes plus now. And without really wringing it because we want it wet, we're gonna shove it in here and shake it through so that everything is distributed distributed evenly. I'll try to leave it in there for like 
two hours, let it dry, see how it looks, see if it changed at all actually. All right, so it's been resting for two hours and we're about to take a peek at it. I can't be sure that the color's stuck on until I dry it. This darker color might just be there because it's wet. I'll just have to wring it out and let it dry and we'll have to compare with the original socks after. Hmm. I'm giving it a few wash just to rinse the color out and I'm noticing that it has like these spots already and that is not encouraging. Hopefully these won't show as much, maybe after a few more rinses. That might be a big oopsie and I'm not sure how to fix that, but it's okay. We'll try to dry it anyways. We are another day and the stockings are dry. They turned out pretty good. If you remember, there were like weird spots yesterday. So I tried to rinse it out a bit more and uh, there's like a few spots left. To be honest with you, I don't know what could have caused that. But from afar and when they're stretched out, it's not super apparent, so it's not that big of a deal. Since we had three pairs, I can show you what the before and the after looks like so that you can have your own comparison. So you can see that this one is the after, that one is the before. Before is much lighter, second one is a bit more yellow, I guess, more tan. It kind of works for me. It might look like this one is more like my skin color right now, but it actually really isn't in real life. My skin tone kind of varies a lot depending on the lighting, so it's gonna be hard for me to convince you that the after is actually better. But as I wear it, it'll stretch out the stockings and uh, the transparency will help it blend to my skin tone a bit better. Okay, on camera, it really looks like this is my skin tone, but it really isn't. Maybe it'll help more if I stick it to my face. Lighter and darker. Of course you can't get it perfect. That's why you pay makeup artists so much to match your skin tone, right? Not make you look like a clown. That's that, and I think this project was a success. I will probably dye my tights again like this in the future because it works. I think the color should, you know, hold for a good few washes. It doesn't seem like it's gonna wash out though, to be honest with you. If you've been following at the adventures of making miracles cosplay this is for her stockings i am probably gonna go back to filming that right now and I'll chop these up unfortunately because we're gonna be sewing our stockings we're gonna be sewing socks to these stockings to help hold them up yeah go watch those thanks for joining me on this mini side adventure that i didn't want to include in my main vlogs Hopefully this might have enlightened you a little bit on the possibilities of dyeing your tights with natural stuff in your kitchen. If you do try this out, I'd love to hear if it turned out well or not for you. And that's it for me. I will see you next time, maybe.